We've cut down these pieces that are um, two years growth and we're going to be making them into rainmill wood chips. So that's um, putting them through a chipper and it's chipping the branches that are seven centimetres diameter or less and that will make the rainmill wood chip. And then we're going to use that to mulch the vegetable garden. These are freshly cut. It's important with the rainmill wood chip that you have freshly cut branches and you chip them while they're still fresh. So these have all been cut in the last week or so. Um, just to give you um, a bit of an idea about the different types of things that you can chip, we've been chipping our biomass willow and even at three years old they are long straight branches and they go in the chipper really easily. Uh, some of these are the willows, the seedling willows, um, goat willows, things like that. Um, they're much more branchy and you've got a lot more work processing them because ones like this we have to chop, chop all the branches off so it takes a bit more time to process that. We've also got other ones like some of the cherries and the apples that we've been chipping. Um, that's quite a hard wood so even though rainmill wood chips are meant to be anything below a seven centimetre diameter there's no way that anything near that would go through the chipper because it's such a hard wood. Um, then we've got the hawthorns. So we had some hawthorns we've been grafting onto um, and as you can see incredibly spiky. So trying to put those through the shredder as well can be quite hazardous. I've got lots of puncture wounds in my hands from doing those. That just gives you a bit of an idea about the different kinds of wood that we've been using. And we've also been using um, alder, a little bit harder to put through the chipper than the willow, but it does have the added benefit of fixing nitrogen in the fields. And over here, we've got the pile of firewood. So anything that was too thick either, either um, above seven centimetre diameter or just too thick to go through the chipper because each chipper has its own limitations. So we'll be using this, seasoning it and using it for firewood. So nothing's wasted here. Unlike chipped bark, this is chipped young branches. 
Um, you can see here, it looks very green. That's the cambial layer of the plant. So it's not like chipped bark, it's, um, it's all the younger branches. I'm going to mulch this in, um, over the polytunnel. You can even dig it in. Um, unlike the bark, it rots down quite quickly, so it won't rob the nitrogen from the soil. These are um, lined with mesh. These are to stop the moles that we have problems with um, attacking the roots of the tomatoes, which happened a couple of years ago. So this was our best solution. It worked really well last year. So I won't be mulching near those. I'm mulching around them. So we're looking for a depth of about five centimetres. Um, something like that. And if we, like here, we've got strawberries, we can just mulch around those. Quite happy there. It's important not to pile this up and leave it in piles or it'll heat up. So here I'm just mulching the strawberries and as the um, Romeo wood chip rots down it'll release nutrients and that'll feed the strawberries. With the tomatoes um, we graft our tomatoes onto a rootstock. We use Estamino. Uh, and we found that um, that helps with um, the vigour of the plant. So we found that our yields are um, between 50 and 100% um, more than the ungrafted of the same variety. Uh, and it also means that um, in this polytunnel where we don't, we use no dig, so we're not constantly changing the soil. Um, it also prevents the soil borne um, diseases from affecting the plants as well. And also this mulch really helps to stop the um, water splash as well from the soil affecting the leaves. spawning the, um, the wood chip just to see really whether we can get a crop of mushrooms. It might be that with it being in a polytunnel it gets too hot and dry but uh, we'll just give it a go and see what happens. So here I've got um, button mushroom, king oyster mushroom, shiitake mushroom and black mirage. So I'm going to spread one variety in each corner and then we'll see what happens. So just going to sprinkle it about. You can see the mycelia here growing on the grain and we're now going to spawn the wood chip and then that will become its food source. So I've sprinkled it around, I'll just mix it in and then it'll get further mixed again as we spread it out over the rest of the soil. And I'll do this in each corner of the polytunnel and then we'll see what we get. starting this a bit late we should have done it in autumn but that's life we've come to the woodland I've raked off um, the autumn's leaves they haven't rotted down yet as you can see what we're looking for is this leaf mold here that's really well rotted and full of these mycelia these little white mycelia here so we've gathered this and we're using that to spawn 
the wood, the Ramiel wood chip that we've put down in the vegetable garden and that's to help start the decomposition which will release the nitrogen uh, and feed the plants. mycelial threads holding all the wood chip together and when you see that you'll know that the nutrients nitrogen and the nutrients will be being made available to the plants and then eventually some mushrooms too and then you'll know it's, it's time to plant I've raked back the Ramiel wood chip. You can see underneath the soil's really moist and crumbly, which is great, it's full of worms. Um, I've used these canes um, to mark where we're going to plant each potato. Um, this helps, we don't rotate our potato patch, so this helps us to check where any volunteer potatoes are coming up. And also for when we're harvesting, if we've cut back a couple of weeks before harvesting, it helps us to find where each potato plant is as we're harvesting. So we'll plant the potatoes in here and then as they come up we'll push the mulch back around them and that should help keep moisture in, stop the weeds and also prevent any potatoes from being green. <laughs> 